Hello and welcome to the Art of Medicine from Anatomy to Diagnosis with Dr. Motahari. Today we are diving into two of the most commonly used inflammatory markers in clinical practice, ESR and CRP. Have you ever wondered why doctors order both tests or how to interpret them in clinical settings? In this video, we'll break down what each test really tells us, how they differ, and when uh, to rely on one or the other. Whether you are a medical student or healthcare professional or just a curious person about how we detect inflammation in the body, this lecture is for you. So let's start. What are inflammatory markers? Inflammatory markers are tools that help doctors to make a diagnosis, to monitor the patients, to differentiate between different etiologies for a disease. CRP. What is ESR? ESR is erythrocyte sedimentation rate. What is that? It means that how quickly red blood cells settles to the bottom of the test tube over an hour. This is a non-specific market. When inflammation exists in the body, some proteins, certain proteins in the blood causes RBC, okay, to stick together and settle faster. That's, that means that ESR will be high. ESR is an indirect measurement of inflammation. It is non-specific. We cannot make a diagnosis with just an ESR. Mm -hmm. Just for a small, very rare rheumatologic disorders, it's okay, like giant cell arthritis. But for the, for the other disease, we cannot just rely on ESR. ESR is completely non-specific and non-sensitive. Uh, Reference range, range of ESR differ, differ between ages and also genders. It means that a body, uh, as we get older, ESR will gradually, normal ESR will, get, will, will gradually come to higher points. Okay, and it's normal, physiological. In the other hand, on the other hand, ESR is higher in female compared to male. So reference range differ based on sex and age. When something happens in the body, um, approximately 24 to 48 hours later, ESR starts to get raised. It reached to its peak at seven to 10 days after initiation of acute inflammation. And it's half time measures up two weeks. Mm -hmm. It means that if uh, someone has a problem and, and he cured, ESR can be high for weeks after treatment. And it's just preferred for chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. it, we prefer ESR for chronic conditions. But ESR is cheap and available everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's why most of the doctors order ESR in the first place. ESR lacks both sensitivity and specificity as a general screening tool. It is not a general screening tool. Mm -hmm. An elevated ESR can occur in multiple settings. And just an elevated ESR is pointless. We cannot do anything based on an ESR. That's why we should not order it without other um, symptoms, signs, with a, without a clinical, uh, with a clinical suspicion. Okay, any process that eva elevate fibrinogen in the body, like pregnancy, infection, diabetes, end stage renal disease, cardiovascular disease, different malignancies can elevate ESR. Anemia, anemia is a prevalent things that cause falsely elevated ESR. On the other hand, some patients with severe malignancies, infection, and inflammations may have norm normal ESR. It means that ESR is not a screening tool. We should use it in a context when we have a specific uh, clinical judgment.
But when we have extremely high ESR, it means that ESR is more than 100, uh, it's reliable. In, it's reliable for uh, the presence of a serious underlying condition. We can rely on it. ESR more than 100 is um, a very important alarming sign for searching for underlying disorder. We also have falsely decreased ESR. Mm -hmm. It means that it's not low, but the result is low. Why? When there is polycytemia, microcytosis, spherocytosis, sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. When there is, uh, when the patients uh, drink alcohol or when the, when the patients do exercises. Mm -hmm. on, 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 and the, in the situation uh, that the blood sample is um, stay in the lab for a while before doing the test. Mm -hmm. All of these things can lead to falsely decreased ESR. Falsely decreased ESR is also important. Why? Because maybe patients have a situation. Patients have a chronic situation, have a rheumatologic disorder, vasculitis, any metastatic malignancies, any conditions that leads to high ESR. But these patients have lowest, has lowest ESR. And we can conclude that, okay, ESR is low. Mm -hmm. That means that maybe there is no problem. That's why we cannot rely on the ESR. So the next one is CRP, C-reactive protein. What is CRP? CRP is an acute phase, phase protein produced by the liver. What are acute, acute phase proteins? These are proteins that uh, synthesis inside the body in a response to some stimulation, like infections, like uh, injuries, like um, uh, inflammations, many different things. Okay, CRP is a direct, direct uh, acute phase reactant. Okay, and it's a very sensitive marker for acute, acute conditions. CRP is a direct measurement of inflammation, more a specific marker for acute inflammation. The good point here is that the reference rate range is distinct. It's not different between this age, that age, men, women. No, we have a, we have a cutoff for that. Mm -hmm. And also it, uh, it uh, rises rapidly in four to six hours after uh, an onset of anything in the body, inflammation in the body, doubled every eight hours and peak to, peak to its highest value in 35 to 15 hours. 50 hour. Its half life is about five to seven hour. All of these things mean that uh, when there is an acute inflammation in the body, for any reason, uh, CRP goes high very quickly and reach its peak quickly and then return normal quickly. It's very good for us to monitor, to, to diagnose and monitor the patient, okay? So we prefer CRP for acute conditions. Patients with high, there are situations like this. Patients have high CRP, but normal ESR. What is this? Typically, these patients have, has kind of infections or ischemia or thromboembolisms. You know, most, lots of um, ischemic conditions, cardiac, brain, lots of things can, um, rise CRP. It's not just limited to infection. Infection disease is just one of the causes of elevated uh, CRP. Mm -hmm. So when we have elevated CRP, we shouldn't just think about, oh, there is an infection uh, reason. No, we should think about it. Maybe the patient CRP goes high without uh, infection, and it's just an inflammation due to other reasons. Okay? Okay. The other, uh, the other situation is that we have high ESR but normal CRP. What is that? These patients may have systematic inflammation, autoimmune process, and any long-lasting things. It also can be associated with malignancies. In some malignancies, we have 
high ESR and normal CRP. So to compare these two parameters together, uh, ESR is an indirect uh, measurement of inflammation and CRP is direct. ESR is uh, produced by some plasma proteins that affects RBCs, but CRP is produced directly by liver. Mm, time to rise for ESR is 24 to 48 hours, but for CRP is only 6 to 8 hours. Mm -hmm. Time to normalize for ESR is days to weeks after treatment. The patients just get good, okay, no problem. Until weeks, ESR could be high. But CRP will return to normal in a few days after treatment. It's very good for monitoring the patients, okay? In acute inflammation, we cannot do easy use ESR. But CRP is very um, good marker, excellent for this marker, okay? In chronic condition, both are good. Okay. ESR is affected by many factors, including anemia, age, pregnancy, uh, laboratory-related things, temperature, lots of things. But CRP is not like that. CRP has minimal, minimal uh, affecting factors. Mm -hmm. uh, some less virulent bacteria can lead to uh, normal CRP. It means that CRP can be falsely negative in some situations. Some like when the patient uh, has an infection with less virulent um, bacteria, hello, pathogens. Okay, or when uh, the patients uh, have uh, immune disorders, they cannot respond to immune to uh, any stimuli, okay? Uh, ESR is cheap and widely available, but CRP is not cheap, slightly uh, more price. So ESR can be used for autoimmune disease and chronic inflammation, while CRP is good for infection and acute, any acute process and also monitoring. So CRP rise and falls faster than ESR make it, it make it more useful for acute inflammation. ESR is slower to response, but is still valuable in chronic inflammatory condition, especially collagen vascular disease. Okay. And also other autoimmune disorders, all the autoimmune disorders. CRP is less influenced by external factors, but uh, ESR is more. ESR is cheaper and widely used, and especially is okay for patients with uh, long-term disease monitoring. Okay, both uh, are complementary tests. We can use them use them together, and also there are lots of other things like procalcitonin. Okay, this is a very good inflammatory marker for bacterial sepsis. It has a very high negative predictive value. It means that when it's high, it's uh, normal, the probability of sepsis is very low. And the other, on the other hand, when uh, you are going, you are treating the patient with antibacterial, procalcitonin is a good marker for monitoring the effectiveness of our treatment. If it comes down 50% every day, it means that our antibiotic is okay. But if it's not, maybe there's a problem with antibiotic. You should change the antibiotic to another one or anything else. And also, there are some new um, methods for ev evaluation of uh, inflammatory markers, like inflammation in the body, like um, things that are just uh, with flow cytometry and uh, evaluate the per permeability of the lymphocytes, neutrophils, all of them white blood cells and based on, on and some other factors uh, give us a score about the uh, probability of uh, bacterial infection and also it's very good for treatment but this is not used widely it's also still in, in clinical research thanks for watching this video thanks for joining me on this journey with 
ESR and CRP. If you learned something new today, subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment your question and share with your colleagues. See you in the next video where medicine becomes art.